G'day guys, Will here, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're getting stuck back into some DIY action and I've got a massive smile on my face because I've been wanting to do some more DIY stuff for a very long time now. And finally, all the parts for what we're gonna be doing today have arrived. So we're gonna be building ourselves a DIY wind simulator for our sim rig. So you might be thinking a wind simulator, how exactly does that work? Uh, what's the deal there? Isn't it just basically a fan? So no, it's not just a fan. What we're gonna be doing is building something that is actually able to increase and decrease the amount of airflow that you feel or the um, speed of the fans, depending on how fast you're traveling inside the sim. So I'm really excited to see just how well this is gonna work. I've seen a couple of people who have done similar things. There are some off the shelf products that are available online as well. And uh, pretty much I've seen nothing but good reviews on this, particularly for people who do a lot of VR. So I'm really keen to see how this is gonna go, but we're gonna be taking the DIY approach today. So I'll run you through quickly all the bits and pieces that you're gonna need to do this. Links are in the description below as well for all the products if you wanna purchase any of this gear. So basically what we're gonna be doing is using two 120 mil fans here, which are just fans that I pulled out of my collection of bits and pieces from various different uh, uh, PC builds and things like that. But these are Fantex 120 mil, uh, 100 or so cubic feet per minute fans. Now you can go up to about 160 cubic feet per minute with this project. So I will provide a link just in the description below for you for the most suitable fans. But what I wanted to do is sort of test out the concept first, see how it goes. And then if it all works well, then I'll probably upgrade the fans a little bit later. And we'll obviously cover that in another video as well. So we've got our 220 mil fans. We've got an Arduino Uno board here as well, which is what is actually gonna be interfacing with the Sim Hub software. We'll cover all of that in detail later on once we've got it all built. We've got a Arduino motor shield as well, which is what is actually going to connect physically to the fans. We're gonna use a 12 volt power supply as well. Show you the details on that a little bit later on too. And then we've got these two tubes here, which is what we're actually gonna to use to direct the airflow to our face. So obviously we wanna try and keep the fans as far away from the sim rig as we can because we don't wanna be picking up the noise in our microphone for streaming and stuff like that. So I'm gonna have the fans tucked away down below somewhere and then I'm gonna use these which actually stretch out like this to sort of direct the airflow from the fan up to my face kind of face and chest areas. So that is the theory anyway and I'm yet to figure out exactly how I'm gonna mount it all on the rig. It's gonna be a bit of a jerry rig project to begin with. Obviously we need to reduce the diameter of the fans down to meet the uh, 76 mil. So we've got 120 mil fans, 76 mil inlets on our directors here on our pipes. And uh, yeah, so I'm yet to sort of figure out how I'm gonna tackle all that stuff. I'm gonna jerry rig it to begin with, see how well it performs in theory, and then we'll come back later on and do a video where we tidy everything up and make it look a little bit more professional. So anyway, without further ado, let's get stuck into getting this all working. Okay, so here in front of us we have our Arduino Uno board as well as our motor shield. Now, what's gonna happen is basically the motor shield's gonna piggyback on the back of the Arduino board here. You can see it's got pre-installed some little pins here which will slot into their respective sockets on here. So very, very straightforward stuff. Now, one thing that I do suggest is put some electrical tape over the top of the USB socket here. Uh, there isn't any contacts that I can see specifically that will interfere, but there are a couple of little pads that do appear to be exposed. So just to be on safety side, I'm gonna put a little bit of electrical tape on there now. So it may not be necessary, but I figure it can't hurt to take an extra little precaution, safety first. So now we wanna slot this into position like so. Make sure you don't bend any pins, push it down. Go. that is our motor shield installed onto the back and you can see there it is hard up against the USB port there so probably a good idea to have that little bit of extra installation now this thing we want to do here now is take off this little jumper that's essentially just telling the circuit to use the power input from here rather than using USB or auxiliary power from the Arduino board so next we need to get on to installing the fans okay so next up we need to prepare the fans to connect to the motor shield so you've got three wires here on these particular fans depending on the fan that you use you may only have two so you've got a negative wire a positive wire and in my case the third wire is the rpm signal wire so we're going to not be using the rpm signal it's not relevant to what we're doing here we're going to trim off the connector so simply cut it off you might want to leave a little bit of wire there just in case you ever want to reconnect it again for some reason so snip it off on both of them and then we're going to want to 
strip the ends here as well. And then do exactly the same on the other fan as well. We can tuck the RPM signal wire away. I'm not gonna be using that one. Now you may also want to just be mindful of the length of the cables. In my case, I've got probably about 40, 50 centimeters of cable on here, which should be enough. But depending on the location where you're gonna be putting your fans, you may want to extend the wires as well before you connect them to the Arduino. So we'll go ahead and do the other fan now, and then we'll get it all connected up to the Arduino board in a moment. So we'll just quickly tin these wires as well before we install them into the terminal blocks, just to help them to not fray and come apart. Very simple. So do both fans like that, and then we can install them into the terminal blocks. So next up, it's time to connect the fans to the motor shield. So you can see we've got a USB port here, our power. Right above that is a terminal strip with five slots or five ports. So we've got our M1 port here, a ground, another ground, another ground, and then our M2 port there. So we want to connect the positive wire to one of the fans, the negative wire to the same fan, negative wire to the second fan, and positive wire to the second fan. So positive, negative, negative, positive. So we want to look for the little streak again on the back of the wire that indicates the negative wire. It goes into the negative terminal, positive into the positive. Okay, so as the desk gets more progressively messy here, we're moving on to our power supply. So I've just picked up a 12 volt DC 3.3 amp power supply that I had kicking around. Uh, look, basically what you wanna do here is you wanna make sure that the power supply that you're choosing is up to the task of driving the fan. So you wanna make sure it's able to supply enough current. 3.3 amps is gonna be way more than I need, but I happen to have this kicking around, so I figured I may as well use it. Probably gonna need about one to 1.5 amp power supply here. So if you're using something like a 500 milliamp or something like that, it might not be quite enough to drive your um, fans, depending on the fans that you've chosen, but just be aware that you will wanna make sure you're choosing a power supply that is up to the task of running the fans. And again, I'll link in the description below to a power supply that will be adequate for pretty much any fan that the motor shield is able to drive for you guys. So what we wanna do here is cut the end off our power supply. Now in this case, I'm not interested in ever connecting it again, so I'm just gonna chop it right off here. And then we wanna strip the end of it so that we have access to our two power wires inside. So strip that off like that. Okay, so just about every power supply out there will have a single positive and negative wire. In this case, the outer shield is our negative and the inner core is our positive. So what I'm gonna do is slip a little bit of heat shrink over the end here just to give us a clean negative wire and positive wire just so there's no chances of any short. Chances are if you've been sensible and got a decent power supply like the one in the description, you won't have this problem. But yeah, I just wanna tidy this up a little bit before we connect it to our Arduino board. And now we just need to screw our power connections into the terminal block here. So just make sure you pay attention to the polarity. Make sure you've got your positive and negative around the right way. It can vary depending on the board revision I've found. So just wanna make sure you pay attention to the markings that are on the board. Obviously plus for positive and minus for negative. So once those are nice and secure, I'm just gonna slide this little bit of heat shrink up over the last little part of the connection. And that should make it nice and snug and ready to power up and test. Okay, so time to get the software side of things sorted out now. So you wanna jump on the net and go to simhubdash.com and then click on download SimHub. Now get the software all installed. Now it is free software, but if you wanna enable the higher refresh rates, then it's uh, you have to pay a small donation. I think I only paid about $2, and uh, it's been absolutely brilliant software. There's a bunch of stuff you can do with it. If you have a look at some of my previous videos, I did a digital dash. Uh, we also did our dashes here that you can see in the video as well, our um, defi gauges, all that sort of thing. So there's, there's a ton of stuff that you can do with SimHub. It's really, really valuable software. So check that out. But once you've got that downloaded and installed, you want to open up the software, obviously, and go to Arduino. So click on Arduino over here, click on Sketch Setup, 
and then you want to select Arduino Uno. Now, it's a good idea if you are already running SibHub and you've got other um, other Arduino devices attached to your system, disconnect them because you don't want to accidentally overwrite the sketch in one of your existing boards. So only have the only have the new board plugged in at this point. So once you've got the Arduino Uno selected here and the board looks correct, you want to give the board a title. This will help you to identify it when you have other things connected, things like that. So we type in wind simulator in there and then we want to scroll all the way down to our motor shield so scroll down to here shake it adafruit motor shield v2 so click plus that takes it to one we only got one connected obviously this isn't the number of fans this is the number of motor shields we've only got one motor shield connected we want to set our pwm frequency to 1600 as well so just set that to 1600 and that is all we need to do in terms of configuration here. We just want to select our Arduino's serial port or USB port. So obviously this will depend on your particular system. Uh, it'll show up here. As I said before, you want to only have the one Arduino board connected. So it's obvious which connection it is that you want to flash. You don't want to accidentally overwrite anything else. And then once that's all done and you're happy with it, click on upload to Arduino. You'll see it'll compile the code for you. Take a minute or so to finish, and if all goes well, you should see a, where is it? Come on, upload successful, there we go. So all is well, so then we wanna just unplug from the USB and plug back in again. I've got it on my lap here so I can access it easily. And then when we close this off, we should see now in just a moment, it can take a moment to connect here. We should see this pop up as connected. You can see, there it goes, so connected. And you can see I've got my SIM hub dash as well, which I've got disconnected currently, which is why that's showing is not connected. So you don't need to change anything here in terms of our serial speed or anything like that. Next thing we wanna do now is actually go through and configure all the motor configurations so it knows exactly what to do with the fan. So first thing we wanna do is click on settings here and then go across to plugins and make sure that you have shake it motors enabled here. If you don't have this enabled, it won't work. So once that's done, we wanna click on, where is it, shaker motors, and then we wanna go down to speed here. Now there's a couple of things that we need to do here to configure things. So we need to first of all switch on the effect, and then we've got a couple of configuration options here that we can use to fine tune and adjust things to our preference. Now this will depend on the types of cars that you're driving, how um, how powerful the fans are as well. So this is a little bit of fine tuning to suit your own personal preference here. But basically we've got an option here for our effect low force. So this is the speed that you'll be traveling for the fans to start spinning. So in my case, I wanna set that to maybe about 20 kilometers an hour. So they don't do anything until I'm doing 20 Ks. And then we've got two options here. We can use auto or manual. So when we're in automatic mode, basically what it does is it scales the maximum force depending on the maximum detected speed. So if you're driving a lot of different cars, this is a good option for you. Basically what it will do is it'll go, all right, this is the maximum speed that I've seen for this particular car. So when you reach that speed, make the motors run at 100% duty cycle. So if you wanna make it so that it's at a specific speed, you click on manual and then you can adjust. You can see this now changes from a percentage to an actual speed, speed rating. So we can crank that up to say 200 or whatever we want. But for me, I like to leave this on automatic and uh, yeah, I think that's gonna probably make the most sense. Now there's one other thing that we're gonna to need to configure here. We're gonna click on motor output. We're gonna switch this on. And then we're gonna expand it and scroll all the way down to, where is it, should see speed. And now we wanna turn on channel one and channel two. Now the reason why we're using these two is those are the two channels that I've got my fans connected to on the motor shield board. If you're using four fans, you would switch on the first four channels. If you're using one fan, you'd only switch on the first channel and so forth. So once that's all done, what we can do then is close this down again, but go back to our effect profiles. So if we've set everything up correctly, we should see the fan spin. So I'll hold this up for you so you can see it. Click on test here and there we go. A little wiggle of the fans. I was touching one of them with my hand there so it didn't spin, but click it again. There we go. So both fans are spinning there. And if we go back into our motor output here and expand this down, we can test the individual channels as well. So we go test channel one and just one of the fan spins, test channel two the other fan spins. Now just to quickly mention as well, there is one more adjustment that you can do here under output tuning. This is more for when you're using motors to replicate things like vibration and short uh, bursts of energy, I guess. So generally speaking for a wind simulator, you can leave the threshold and minimum force both set to zero. Uh, the settings that we have under effect profiles is enough 
to make the adjustments that we need. But uh, if you do find you want to fine tune things, you can experiment around with this. And I will link below in the description to the documentation for this as well. So you get a better idea of exactly how this is all set up. But what I'll do is once I've got this all configured properly, I'll do another video once we've got it all mounted on the rig and everything to just show you what my final settings are once I've had to play around with it and everything. The focus of this video is basically just to get it working and test the, uh, test the theory, I guess. So what we'll do now is jump into a sim and actually test this out. Okay, so we've enlisted the help of my daughter's Barbie doll here and you can tell it's a very old one I must have been Jules at some point because it's wearing an apron pretty sure you wouldn't get away with that in 2019 But uh, anyway, she's going to help us out with a little bit of visualization here I'll also obviously describe what I feel as I'm driving as well So what we've done is we've just basically strung the fan up in position now blowing in this general direction uh, Just to give us a basic understanding of whether this is going to work as a concept or not And then obviously we'll do fine-tuning from there so let's jump out all right so we got movement straight away so that's a good sign it's ramping up I'm not really feeling anything just yet but we'll see what happens when we hit the longer straights okay I can feel a little bit okay yeah I'm feeling it now <laughs> Okay, that okay, that is pretty cool. I mean, it's it's kind of like it's not as strong as it needs to be, and obviously we're not directing the airflow towards our face yet either. But going down the straight here, you can see Barbie's hair is starting to move a little bit, so it's definitely working. And yeah, I'm feeling that across my body now. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous test I've ever done. <laughs> All right, let's turn it in. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the problem here is that the fan just isn't as strong as it needs to be. It's, um, as I said at the start of the video, it's just a fan that I found laying around, basically. And um, I think it definitely needs something stronger. I know that the circuit can support fans a lot stronger. So what I'll do is I'll, the, the, the fan that I link in the description below will be a fan that I know will work. And what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll order the same fan or something similar as well. I'll see if I can pick something up that's the same rating in a local store and um, we'll do a part two video where we sort of finalize everything and um, kind of get everything hooked up properly with with um, with appropriate fans and everything but it's definitely working as a concept you can see there it's speeding up and ramping down as I come to a stop here again you'll see it slow down but what I'll do quickly for you now is I'll hook up a digital multimeter to the output of the motor shield as well so we can see how the voltage actually scales as we're driving because that'll give us a better indication of what could happen if we had the correct fans there. But it's definitely working. I'm definitely feeling something. It's just these fans that I've got here at the moment aren't really appropriate for the task. So thank you very much for your help, Barbie. But we're going to replace you with a digital multimeter now. All right, so what I've done is I've hooked up a digital multimeter to the output of the motor shield now. We've set our maximum speed in SimHub to 150 kilometers an hour. So given that we're using a 12 volt power supply here, we should see a 12 volt uh, reading on the digital multimeter when we reach 150 kilometers an hour. Anything below that and we should see a lower voltage. Now I'm sort of holding the probes on, on my hand here while I'm driving, so it's gonna be a little bit crude. But uh, hopefully everything will work and it will demonstrate the point. I probably should have switched to an automatic transmission, but it uh, doesn't matter. So as we head out, we should see voltage there. Yep, we've got two, three volts, six volts at 100, eight volts going around the corner here. So 130. So we'll do a little bit of testing down the back straight here, the um, long straight. So see what different speeds do. And obviously this is all adjustable. I'm just trying not to crash here. Spinning out. Whoa, there we go. All right. So 60 kilometers an hour, 4 volts, 5 volts. So it's working exactly the way we want it to. The problem here is just simply that the fan isn't strong enough to deliver the amount of airflow that we require. And that's kind of what I thought might happen with these fans. But I wanted to test it out with what I had laying around before I did anything else. But you can see here now, at 170 kilometers an hour, we've got just under 12 volts, which is exactly what we want. Obviously, there's a little bit of voltage droop there because we've got two fans running off it, and that's going to pull the voltage down a bit. And now we're crashing into a wall, but uh, oh, we just kept it off the wall. But I think that pretty much well proves the point. This is all going to work in theory. We just need to get appropriate fans and finish getting everything rigged up. 
Okay, guys, so that is how you can build your very own wind simulator with variable wind speed. So I've done a little bit of research since we filmed the last little part of the video, and basically what it comes down to is this. The motor shield itself can handle up to three amps peak current with a current limit of 1.2 amps per channel. So what I've done is I've linked in the description below to some fans that fall within that spec. They also recommend that you install some little heat sinks on top of the motor controller chips as well. So I'll include links to those as well below. But what I'll do is I'll get my hands on a set of the fans that I recommend. We'll also get some little heat sinks for the motor shield and install those as well. And then we'll get to work actually installing the ducting and everything like that. There's no point in installing the ducting on these fans because obviously these aren't the fans that we're going to ultimately end up using. But definitely as a proof of concept, everything works. We can see that the voltage is being varied depending on our speed, which is exactly what we want. So yeah, it should be a really interesting project to finish off in the next video. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and learned something if you have please do hit that thumbs up button make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss the next video i've actually got some really exciting stuff coming up over the next couple of weeks got another really high-end pc build coming up as well even higher spec than this one is beside me and even more extreme than that one so really looking forward to that build uh we've got a couple of other reviews and things coming up as well, we'll obviously finish off the wind simulator and yeah a bunch of cool stuff coming so make sure you are subscribed if you aren't already and it'd be awesome if you guys could use the link in the description below to pick up the gear if you're looking at building one of these for yourself or any of the other gear that you've seen in our videos. A small portion of some of those sales comes back to helping out with the cost of running the channel. So thank you guys very much for the support there. We also do have our brand new join button as well. So if you want to support the channel, that is an awesome way to do that as well. But thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.